to Dr. C. Prince Williams. Prince. Uh, so, so honored to be here and thank you so much, uh, Dr. Frazier and Dr. Caraballo. Uh, my name is Franz Williams. I serve a few different roles, but I'm a last semester master's of public administration student, uh, just a few more clicks away from, from finishing up. But I also serve as the president of the International City County Management Association here at FIU. Um, and in that role, I really, both myself as president, my executive team, as well as the organization, really look to br uh, build bridges between our students, our faculty, and our city managers. And uh, what a time to be a city manager, right? So much important work has to get done. Uh, but ultimately, I come here uh, having benefited greatly from mentors and from other networks and just hope to uh, provide some of the lessons learned uh, to you all here today. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad that you guys all got to mention their respective organizations, ICMA, ASPA, uh, the National Forum for Black Public Administrators. A lot of these organizations really are about the importance of forming connections and networks. Um, and as was mentioned in one of the earlier panels, um, a lot of it, as we really have heard many, many times before, it's all about who you know. Um, it's a lot of times it's about making those connections that can lead to other opportunities, help open doors. Um, so I know we've mentioned some of the ways that we've kind of connected as well. Uh, Dr. Belazer, um, would you mind telling us a little bit about um, how you got to be involved in the National Forum of Black Public Administrators and some of the professional organizations you've been involved in? Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Let's see. So when it comes to the wonderful South Florida chapter of the NFBPA, I must say I would be remiss. Uh, actually, a fraternity brother of mine, Dr. Philip Harris, the president of the South Florida chapter, was the one that connected with me. And um, the common denominator that we would say we're all here is some form of networking. In addition to that, I would say that I believe he planted a seed and at that particular moment, I didn't know how it would actually grow out. And at that time, I was just in the midst of completing my doctoral program. And I recall him telling me that this is a wonderful organization. You hear so much organizations, especially throughout your collegiate years. At some point, you tend to get tired of it. But however, you know, the, through your growth process, it's necessary. So definitely as a former student representative now serving as a co-chair under Dr. Keisha Gray for the Professional Development Committee, I've seen so much, even my opportunity within local government. I've had the opportunity to serve as a PIO for the city of Lauderdale Lakes under, um, I believe I saw Madam Mayor Hazel Rogers on the call as well too. So NFBPA was that starting point that allowed me to connect and be in the position where I am today. Thank you so much. Uh, and Kayla, you had mentioned obviously your involvement with ASPA South Florida um, as the student representative. Um, actually, wouldn't mind if, if you would share your experience recently when looking for an interviewee for your dissertation and how we were able to make that connection from a past honoree from the South Florida chapter. Yes. Um, well, um, like I mentioned before, I'm nearing the end of my dissertation and it's been quite challenging to um, connect with first responders. They're busy, they've had, you know, they're dealing with a pandemic and there's also, um, especially police officers, um, I think there's a, a gap between them wanting to open themselves up to have, you know, people study them and, and it's very kind of tumultuous time. So um, I had a lot of difficulty just kind of blind reaching out, kind of cold calling, cold emailing, um, people within um, Palm Beach. So I was just casually talking to Dr. Carbaro about um, actually planning for this conference. And she mentioned that they had um, a, uh, what was it, a conference or an award ceremony for um, first responders? So it was, yes, it was like an award ceremony where they had met a lot of first responders, um, police and firefighters. And she was able to connect me um, to two people in Palm Beach and actually helped um, kind of snowball from there where I've um, actually been able to meet my criteria for um, 15 interviews for firefighters and now I'm starting with police officers. Um, and I think this is a really important 
um, thing is connection because sometimes you think, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm doing a study. People should be interested in it. It's a timely topic. Um, but it's all about who you know and, and how you can build that trust with someone. And you're, I wasn't able to do that over the phone. You're not usually, you know, you could do that in person when you go to the station and you meet them and you kind of, they, they know you, you have that kind of informal opportunity to um, decompress and get to know you basically. Um, and with this online environment that we're now surrounded ourselves with, um, you often don't have that. It's like straight to business. Um, the, you read the email, they either respond or they don't. You don't get that opportunity to kind of plead your case almost. So in this environment, I think it makes it especially important to have the connections like ASPA um, to connect you to professionals, um, not only through you know, what I'm doing, but also if you're looking for a job, there are several other applicants. How are you gonna make yourself kind of stand out to people? How are you gonna connect? How are you gonna know what they're looking for? These are things that um, ASPA can really help you develop um, and understand as you're entering the job market. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm gonna go to you, France, um, and I want you to tell us a little bit about the ICMA at FIU mentoring program and what that means and why, um, how that took shape. Uh, definitely, and I think ultimately my frame uh, for mentorship, and hopefully I'm coming through, uh, my frame for mentorship and associations really is that your network is your net worth. Um, who needs a mentor or who needs associations? If you happen to know everything, you probably don't need a mentor. But if you need any help on any subject that you're not familiar with, a mentor or, or association can really, really help you out. And um, as Kayla had mentioned, it really can help form a community. Uh, to really directly answer uh, Dr. Caraballo's question, um, in this role, uh, or let me take a step back and say volunteering sometimes can really be a really good catalyst and way to jump right into either um, new spaces, new people, or new initiatives. And really, that's kind of the summary of how ICMA came up with this pretty innovative mentorship program. In a few sound bites, again, uh, the mission of ICMA is to make sure that practice of city management um, gets better. Uh, and it gets better by expanding the table and having more people participate. And in our role here, uh, fortunate at FIU's public administration, public policy and administration department, we were approached uh, with a pretty novel um, opportunity. Ultimately, we have now uh, collaborated with the village of town, uh, excuse me, the village of Cutler Bay uh, to devise a student pathway program to local government hey, what do you think about if you're the city manager or village manager as it relates to COVID-19, social equity? Um, these are pressing questions, not just for here, you know, our residents in South Florida, but of course, across uh, our country and the world. And really the mentorship, the, the pathway, I would, have, would really wanna say, and infrastructure is now there to have more people, um, students like myself, participate in the local government process. Um, and ultimately, I don't want to take too much time, but I think the more you're willing to raise your hand and ask questions, ask advice, um, the more you can grow your relationships and get mentors uh, for a variety of, of topics or interests. Talk about raising your hand. I want to raise my hand. We use sometimes the word networking and connecting. I, I, want, I want to add an additional word, relationship building, right? Um, because networking, sometimes that word can be a little scary. Going back to something that you said also, Kayla. Um, but if you think about what, what about a person is, is really interesting and, and wow, I would really like to get to know this person. And the panel earlier this morning, um, it was a, a wonderful panel, uh, all the communications uh, professionals that were on the panel. One of them talked about it's networking and, and looking for mentoring is not about what someone can do for you. It's what you can bring to someone else or another organization. And to me, that is truly the basis for relationship building. 
I have a relationship with each one of you here on, on the panel. And honestly, I've learned from each and every one of you. And, and that's the beauty of networking and building relationships, not just what someone can do for you, but what you can learn from someone else. I agree. And then there's. You're on mute, Dr. C. Thank you. Um, and one thing I would add to that is just uh, sponsors. You know, um, there's a, a distinction between having a, a mentor and a sponsor. A sponsor is really somebody who's going to go to bat for you, who's going to advocate for you, try to find opportunities, um, basically keep you on top of mind, and you know, putting your name out there, you know, as much as possible, and you know, advocating for you when you're not there. Um, I've been very fortunate to have incredible mentors, uh, net, you know, sponsors, and just finding different ways to, to pay it forward. One thing I really liked that Dominic Moody had mentioned early in her panel was when you're trying to build these relationships um, and you're building these networks, like Dr. Fraser said, is focus first on what you can give before asking to receive. Um, it, it really does go a long way. I am really fortunate to have a number of interns, um, past and present that joined us today. Um, and again, just them reaching out, asking if they could help, if they could assist in any way, it goes a long way. So when opportunities come up um, and people ask for recommendations, these are the, you know, the students and the people that come first to mind and that I'm happy to endorse. I would like you guys to just um, perhaps maybe comment a little bit on how you, besides obviously in this era of digital, um, beyond just LinkedIn, what are some of your strategies for expanding your network? Uh, I can go first. Um, so like I mentioned in my kind of pre, my pre-introduction, um, I am typically a very shy person. So at the beginning of the year in January, I always make a list of like the top five things I wanna accomplish professionally um, throughout the year. If I don't do that, I won't do anything. Um, and there've been years where I haven't done that and I didn't grow and I didn't really um, put myself out there. Um, and I wanna kind of piggyback on what Franz, um, Agatha and Dr. Kerb, uh, Dr. Frazier were saying about if you don't volunteer, if you don't put yourself out there, you will never get any further. So if you just expect these opportunities to come to you, they will never come to you. You will never grow your network by just hoping um, and being a friendly person. You need to strategically make a plan to reach out to different people, to, to do different opportunities. And the number one way that I've been able to do that um, throughout my career is by volunteering. Um, before I entered public administration, I was a social worker. I volunteered at the National Association for Social Workers. I volunteered at the National Association of Public Health. And you'd be surprised how li little students are involved in some of these big organizations. Um, just mentioning those two, I was the only student to, to offer my assistance um, to help them develop like um, a policy framework for social workers. Um, and they were so surprised that I was interested in doing that, that they still can, they still, you know, offer me opportunities. They still connect with me. Um, and I would have never have gotten to where I am if I didn't, you know, reach out to the, to the people um, and to the organizations that are of interest of you. So what I do, like I said, beginning of the year, I kind of make a list. I, I research and I say like, how do I want to grow this year? What do I want to do? And I try to find opportunities that fit that interest of mine. So like I said, I did the policy um, five years back. Um, I've done uh, public health, which is, was an interest of mine as well. And now I'm doing um, ASPA South Florida, which I think is a great local networking tool. Um, and I did that strategically so that I could meet people so that I could kind of put myself in a position where I felt like I was growing. Um, so that's my number one, I guess, um, feedback is to just do your research. You won't ever make it unless you put yourself out there. Awesome. Um, I'll go ahead to add to that. In addition to that, I would say you always hear the old saying as far as never be too shy to get your hands dirty. 
And one of the things that I've realized throughout my, during my collegiate years till now is that we started doing research a long time ago. Some of the skill sets that are taught to you by your parents, your work ethics, you take that with you into your professional career. In addition to that, when it comes to networking, I believe that I took the strategy of seeking out, looking at my goals and how does it align with the vision that I have. So I believe I said this in one of your classes, Dr. Frazier, that every goal begins with a vision. So doing research, looking at those potential mentors, but most importantly, the career path that I wanted to take, complete that research, look into what courses did they take, what career paths did they take to get them to the position where they are now. So that's one of the key essential tools that I believe that helps me grow with, especially during these times. And you have such a wonderful resource, such as not only your organizations, but tools like LinkedIn, where I can read your job description. In addition to your job description, the awards and the certifications and the organizations that you belong to. And I know that I need to go ahead and indulge myself or connect and join these memberships as students. I encourage all students, practically all student rates are either half the cost or free. So that's a token in addition to allow you the opportunity to connect with someone that will align with the vision that you have. I would be remiss in this panel if I didn't give the biggest shout out to Rosalind Alec Batson, who was the person who really brought me into the ASPA Florida, South Florida chapter family. Um, going back to when I was a student, I volunteered when the national conference was in Miami. And I remember Rod literally just being like, come take me under her wing, you know, <laughs> come walk with me, let's talk. <laughs> Um, and really just maybe be a part of the family. Um, and what I really appreciate about the South Florida chapter was that they gave me a lot of opportunity to take the initiative and just run with things. You know, so if I wanted to try this, if I wanted to try that, I wanted to create social media, if I want, yeah, if I was willing to do the work, they were willing to support me. Um, and it really did help me to build a reputation, a niche for myself um, that led to a lot of other opportunities. Um, the other thing that I did last year is while I feel like I have a very strong network in South Florida, um, I wanted to reach out to contacts that I had through ASPA from around the country and around the world. Um, and I started thinking about if, you know, as I wanted to expand my network of mentors. Um, so I started cold emailing uh, people that I had met at past conferences that I was connected with on social media. Um, just asking if I could perhaps set up a short Zoom meeting with them um, just to kind of reintroduce myself. Um, about half of them responded. Some did, some didn't. Um, and again, the important thing to remember is don't take it personally. Um, there's sometimes there, it's a time issue, it's a fit issue. Um, but the big thing is, is to not take it personally, just to keep it moving. It's a big world out there. There's a lot of people. Um, Again, and you'll find the right fit for you. Um, but it, it is, it's you don't limit yourself to just one mentor, one network. Um, and then the most important thing is, is that once you get into a position where you can start mentoring others, don't forget to reach back and pull somebody else up. So I did wanna, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Franz. I'll be, be uh, brief, Dr. Frazier, but I did want to just snap and echo uh, some of the comments that, that you know, my colleagues and panelists have said, you know, it does require you to be a little uncomfortable. Uh, Kayla says you do have to raise your hand in a sense. You do have to start with a, maybe a plan uh, of some kind, as Dr. Belzer says, maybe even a problem. Um, hey, my car won't start. It doesn't have to be that, that technically difficult. Um, or, hey, how do you cook an egg? Uh, but ultimately, once you have some question or goal in mind, obviously these are small, you just have to start going out and asking people. Um, as as uh, Dr. Carabayo kind of alluded to, people are people. They might have busy times in their lives, certainly in 2020, but uh, don't be afraid to ask. And this also comes from my professional job of being a development specialist. So I'm used to asking for people uh, to pick up the phone and chat with me, uh, but sort of to leave it on, maybe a, my own secret sauce, as it were. 
people like to talk about themselves. Go figure. If you have a genuine interest in a topic or something about a person, ask them for a favor. You will make a friend for life if you ask somebody for a favor. Hey, Dr. Carabayo, could I have 15 minutes of your time? I would love to know how you got started and really how you elevated to now, you know, be the chair of this conference. Interesting. Uh, you know, I could go on and on, but ultimately just ask people for a favor. Could I have five minutes of your time? And really that is my kind of secret to starting a conversation. Uh, Dr. Frazier, what? The most well, important thing is just to be genuine. Ab absolutely. I think that, that my secret um, rocket fuel is I get such a kick out of seeing uh, people who I mentor just grow and, and go beyond what either they thought they could do or, you know, what I know they can do, but they maybe didn't have that vision. And I, I just keep pushing or pulling sometimes, let me tell you, because doc, Dr. C has pulled me sometimes, not just push, but pull. We kind of push and pull each other. I've, I've pulled Kayla a little bit. I've pulled Dr. Belly there a lot <laughs> and push, you know, because I've also worked with them as adjuncts, fabulous adjuncts, creative, uh, dedicated people, um, just unbelievable, unbelievable educators. So that's what really energizes me. And then I, I um, challenge my mentees to mentor someone else, right? Give back. And just like Dr. C said, all right, who are you taking with you? Whether you're pushing them, pulling them, or they're walking alongside you, who, how are you giving back? And, and to me, that, that just energizes me completely. And when somebody believes in you, um, believe them. Um, I remember when I first was involved with the STEM chapter, kept, people kept asking, when am I going to be the chapter president? And I kept saying, no, 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 I'm not ready, not ready, maybe someday, but no, somebody else go first, somebody else go first. And it finally got to the point where I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> um, but I had to listen to those who saw the potential and my leadership before even I recognized it. Um, so again, when you have those supporters around you, um, again, don't question it because they see something that maybe sometimes you might question in yourself, um, but they see it for a reason and they want to encourage it and they want to nurture it. So um, again, have as much faith in yourself as your mentors do. I want to add also, uh, Dr. C, that many of our institutions have tremendous support for our students. Like at FIU, I send students, before I even really start the mentor-mentee relationship, I take a look at their resume, resume and it's like, oh, you, you need to visit Millie or Nellie at the Career Center. Then, you know, they will help you with your resume. They'll help you translate some skill sets that you may not think you have. And then we talk about LinkedIn and all the different opportunities that students have that sometimes they don't know about because they're so into, you know, I, I've got homework, I've got family, I've got, I've got work. So the more knowledge that we can impart our students, uh, you know, the better that they will be. And, and that's very important to me also. Uh, you know, we've got global learning. Dr. Belizaire is teaching global learning. Um, we've got COIL, which is Collaborative Online International Learning. I now have a writing and event partner in India. Now I have another one through Dr. Rosenbaum. I'm, I'm collaborating with a professor from the Ukraine. I, you know, so open yourselves up as students and professionals, just like Dr. C said, to, to meet people on a national and international level as well. that was posted in the Q&A, which um, France you know, addressed it, but I wanted to give everyone else the chance. Um, so Nicole Regalado asked, COVID-19 has limited a lot of volunteering opportunities for students. What recommendations do you have for students to find a way to continue to give back to the communities during this time? Um, I could go first. Um, 
So actually this was, I taught a class in the summer, right? It was an online class. And part of the requirements was to, to find some opportunity to give back. And Dr. Frazier encouraged me to do this because it was a part of, you know, public part of public administration is that op- idea of service of, you know, serving others, serving your serving more than just yourself. And that's what kind of distinguishes public from private. Um, I had a lot of students push back with this. They said there are no opportunities. There's there's no opportunities for me to give back. And I actually pushed back for harder with them because this is probably the most important time ever to volunteer during COVID-19, um, all the political unrest, there are so many things that you could do virtually. And COVID-19 has literally changed the way that we operate in a blink of an eye. So now you can go online, search, search your, you know, your policy interest, and you can sign a petition to you know, X, Y, and Z. You can, um, you can literally just Google virtual opportunities to volunteer, and there are thousands of opportunities. So you know, I know that you can't physically go somewhere, but there are more opportunities than ever if you just put yourself out there. Um, I recently completed a training on um, contact tracing. So now I'm able to contact trace in my own community. So there are things that you can do um, that you can give back in your own home. You can knit for someone, you can um, donate to get groceries to the homeless. There are so many opportunities. So don't let you know challenges define the way that you give back. Awesome, thank you. Um, I may just add in, and I, I love that um, sense of no matter where we are, we can probably serve somebody. And a, a really good way that helps me ground myself, Nicole, and, and, and family, right, is what problem do I want to solve? And ultimately, kind of when I, I think from that, oh, I want to make sure my neighbors have enough food. I want to make sure, I mean, I'm, I'm being sort of making something up on the spot, but less than, oh, what can I do is, well, how can I help the homeless right now or the homeless population? Or kind of in that sense, I really lead from what's the problem that I might be able to help lean into or, or support in some way. And uh, as, as Kayla had mentioned, really now is, is a unique opportunity. I also really wanted to say, sort of add a, a, a different element. You never know where one step will lead you. I have found particularly in this year, one year ago, I was standing side by side with many of you in the conference. And funny enough, Vernice pointed to me and said, you should be ICMA president. I didn't want to be president. I'm working. I got other stuff to do. Oh, my God. I only thought of the negative. But as I reflected uh, kind of on my own personal why I like to be an access advocate, I thought, what a great opportunity to lean in and learn. Fast forward one year, uh, and now I'm here talking to you all. So I just sort of wanted to give you a sense that not all of it is planned. A lot of it is just uh, right time, right place, right person. And uh, we're people. So I advise everyone just divers- diversify your, your board of directors because I need people to talk to about science or um, you know fourth industrial revolution as much as I need people to talk about health, wellness, uh, or just you know going about my job. Could I just say also that, um, so, sorry, Dr. C, could I just say also um, where we're all on this panel, we're all excited and, and happy uh, with, w- without a colada right now, um, but it's not a straight line what we're talking about, right? There are plenty of pitfalls there are many times where, where we will fail, but we pick ourselves up again. And, and sometimes I, I have to remind students that, listen, there, there's, there's, it's not a problem when you fail. It's a problem when, when you give up, right? Because all of us have had bad grades. I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, we, we all have. We're not, even though we're high achievers, as you look at us now, but you know, I've failed classes. I, you know, I, I paid a lot for tutors, math tutors. <laughs> you know, 
Um, doc, Dr. Belizaire has great examples, but he just kept picking himself up until he got to the point where he kicked himself in the Dalyell and got himself moving, right? So it, none of us will tell you it's an easy road. Dr. Belizaire, take it. <laughs> so um, in, in reference to what Dr. First initially to answer, uh, a lot of virtual opportunities, such as NFBPA South Florida's chapter, we also have a lot of virtual opportunity. But however, to go back to what Dr. Frazier was saying, one of the things from personal experience that I can say is the willpower. How are you discovering what's your willpower to transition from your current situation? So one of the things I do encourage students is during these times, there's future yous that are out there. When you visit your local elementary, middle school, high school, this is your opportunity to connect with your alma mater or your local school, depending on the area you're in, and provide um, volunteering opportunities there. That's so important because the small impacts that you can have starts just with communication. So I highly, highly encourage you when it comes to that. For myself, during these times, I can recall during my undergraduate years that it was a journey you know, to maintain certain GPAs because of wanting to belong to certain organizations. In addition to that, the opportunity to be awarded scholarships is so much more. So it's one of those things that if you're searching and you're utilizing the resources that are around you, you definitely will position yourself for those goals that you have in mind. So ultimately, it, it, it starts with you identify that willpower, utilize that willpower, and that becomes your motivational factor. It was one of those things I started seeing everybody graduating. You know, students, you may find it hard during these times, these COVID times, because you're Zoomed out. You know, in addition to Zoom this, Zoom that, every meeting, every organization, and so forth. So you kind of finding yourself wanting to disconnect. However, the resources are available via internet during these times. So you have to take advantage of that and identify your willpower, which definitely will lead you in that path. I wanted to piggyback off of that and just kind of mention scholarship opportunities are the number one way that I've been able to grow my network. Um, you, If you don't look into these opportunities, you don't apply, you'll never get it. I used to kind of think, oh, I don't really qualify. I don't um, I'm not a good fit for this, but after reading it, reflecting on it and realizing that some students apply to everything um, and they all, oftentimes are the ones that get it. So if you don't apply, you'll never get it. And you're never, you're, you'll always think like, oh, I wish I was that person. I wish I was qualified to be um, this scholarship recipient or this scholarship recipient. Um, I used to apply to one or two per year. Now I'm like, okay, I'm going to apply for everything that I think is relevant to my life. And now I'm getting more scholarships. Now I'm getting more people reach out to me, um, even students and say, how do I get this scholarship? How do I apply for this? Um, South Florida has a lot of scholarships. Uh, I think we have five or six now. Um, so I often mark on my calendar, like I said, January 1st, I mark on my calendar what scholarships I'm gonna apply for this year. Um, they, they're on the same, you know, same month every year. So I just apply, apply, apply. So I can prepare myself in order to, to make those connections and to actually have those opportunities. I wanna echo that as somebody who has served on numerous scholarship committees, um, it's a numbers game. And like the lotto, you gotta be in it to win it. Um, and sometimes, like I said, if it's a small pool, the odds are great. Uh, last year for the section for women in public administration, we decided to up the number of scholarships that we give out from three to 10 um, for the 100th you know, anniversary of the suffrage. We had 10 applicants. Everybody got a scholarship. <laughs> I got that um, scholarship. So that's kind of, you know, you, you won't get it unless you apply. <laughs> Exactly, you know, and we were kind of worried that, you know, it's going to be a tough pick and exactly everybody was outstanding and equally qualified. So we were thrilled that we were able to award everyone um, and have some money left over for the following year scholarship. Um, so yeah, so definitely to reiterate that apply um, and it goes the same thing with jobs. 
you know, don't disqualify yourself, you know, obviously make sure that you meet the minimum qualifications. Um, but if you meet those minimum qualifications, go for it. Applaud. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to mention, someone was asking, can I share some of the scholarship opportunities? And I actually created a link for this specific, uh, specific webinar um, with um, where you can fill out your information and I can send you specific scholarships for not only ASPA South Florida, but also our parent organization, as well as different um, opportunities, mentorship opportunities that we provide. Um, so I'm gonna send that um, Qualtrics link. And if you are interested in any mentorship opportunities with ASPA South Florida, please fill it out and I'll reach back out to you. Um, if not today, definitely Monday. Thank you, Kayla. I also want to remind students, listen, I know you get bombarded with a lot of emails, but I tell my students all the time, just give them a glance. And that's how I saw an email for the National Science Foundation Fellowship years ago. Whenever there's money involved, I'm there. And my students know that. It's all about show me the money. I followed that email link. I did what I needed to do. I went and found a sponsor, Dr. Emil Ganapati, who then became my dissertation chair. And I got so much money for the first three years of my PhD. But it takes work. Nobody's going to give it to you because you're cute, right? It takes work. Just look at the emails. And then if it's not relevant, get rid of it. But read the emails we send you, please. So Marissa Collins has a question in the chat. Um, and I'm not sure if this is referring specifically to the ICMA mentorship, um, if it's for students or alumni can take part. Uh, so I was just going to say ICMA right now is only student based, uh, but let me do, uh, I know Marissa and I are already network friends on LinkedIn. I'm happy to get you a little bit more information because uh, to put it simply, FCCMA, the Florida based um, organization and branch of ICMA, in fact, has a few other opportunities. So I'll follow up. And anyone else, please uh, connect on LinkedIn and happy to get you information. A lot of these parent organizations, sorry, Agatha. Um, a lot of these parent organizations like um, ASPA and ICMA, um, they often have specific opportunities for professionals, mentorship opportunities, etc. I know that um, ASPA National has um, a professional section, a student and professional section. Um, the section on women often have a professional component. Um, so, if the specific, you know. Um, if, if, you know, South Florida or ICMA at FIU doesn't, if it's often the parent organization that will have these professional opportunities. And that is another great way to connect nationally with people, um, not only within, you know, your specific South Florida, but nationally with different opportunities that, you know, you can grow from. Thanks for mentioning that, Kayla. I did just want to echo something that Michael had said earlier on the panel is take advantage of opportunities that are only available to students while you're still a student. Um, in some cases, it is easier to get your foot in the door through an internship, through a you know, mentorship program, apprenticeship, scholarships. Um, you know, there are just certain programs that are you know, earmarked for students. So if you can take advantage of those connections, um, please do because most professionals, they wanna find a way to help students. They want to be able to reach out and assist. Um, I don't want to say the door closes when you graduate, but take full advantage of everything that your tuition is, is paying for and all the opportunities that come along with that. I was, not to be long, but uh, something that Dr. Belazare had said that really I had thought about in preparing for this conversation, uh, the phrase dress for the job you want I think also is apt for uh, the network and the, the type of relationships you want. Talk to those people who you think you would need to rely upon when you get to that you know, corner office or as you are rising, you know, maybe as a student or junior manager, you wanna know what it's like you know, at, the, at the top office. So ultimately, even if you're not there, apply to those jobs, ask others, but start to think about I'm talking to those people who can help kind of frame out what that looks like for you. I would also like to add, think about um, 
research opportunities, think tanks. You know, sometimes as, as um, public policy people, we, we think a little narrowly, but, but if you broaden your thinking, right? You can create other opportunities and then connect and form relationships with people in, in different areas that you may not have thought of before. Um, I, you know, I, I, I have many students who are policy wonks now in the making. And honestly, a year ago, they never thought that they would be so enthralled with policy. So you never know, just like most people in the panel are saying, you never know where the road's going to take you. So be open, be flexible, and just take a look at everything. And just because you're studying public policy and administration, don't discount the private sector, right? If you love to research, if, you're, if you enjoy uh, analysis and stats, I mean, the private sector is going to pay you lots of money to do those things, right? So yes, we want to keep you in public service, but you can go private, come back public. And there are many professionals who look at their resumes, their profiles, they go in and out until they find their fit. But every step is a learning opportunity, right? Uh, so don't discount the private sector or the nonprofit sector either. So to echo something that Dr. Fraser just said, to segue into learning opportunity, uh, Mr. Williams said something earlier about building bridges. You have to realize uh, one of the important things of mentoring and networking, we're surrounded by mentors, whether it's the janitor or the, you look at the Chick-fil-A effect, they're just happy at all given times. But most importantly, you're surrounded by mentors, even yourself as a public servant, you're considered to be a mentor as well. Uh, when we look at a mentor, we look at what is it about them? You're influenced by some action something that they said that sparked something for you that said, you know what, this is somebody I want to connect with. That was something for me with mentors that have played a role in my life and they changed their perspective on your view of thinking. So that's one of the most important things that I look at when I hear the word mentorship, mentoring or network, how does this individual change my mindset? So those are the things that I want you to think about just students, even working professionals that you continue. It's important that you always stay connected, not only through social media, but just sometimes just picking up the phone to call. You know, some people feel like I can only rely on my mentor when I need something or a letter of recommendation. It's more to it than just that. I can say that with my colleagues because you end up building a friendship, but most importantly, you become a part of the family. So that's one of the things that You'll, you'll begin to see that as you grow professionally and even personally. I wanna thank you all so much uh, for taking this time this afternoon. I'm so grateful to have you all as a part of my network. Um, wanna thank everyone for joining us um, today for the Best Practices Conference. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm gonna post in the chat now the information regarding our Black History Month forum that is coming up soon. And I'm going to have uh, my colleague, Rosalind, join us for some final remarks. And thank you once again. Okay, guys, thank you. Thank that you. was fabulous. Um, just wanted to remind you of our program coming up next month, March 25th, our Women's History Month reception. Um, that's gonna be virtual. So please join us, the, the information is in the program. And also our, our awards um, event in June. I don't think we have a date yet for that, um, but please look at, look at the list of um, the different categories for the nominations and send us your nomination. You know, just don't let Agatha and I make those decisions, which we're quite capable of doing, mind you. <laughs> we love to make executive decisions, but we would like some input. Um, so just, you know, send us those nominations. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, we look forward to you guys joining us at the next, uh, in, the, in a few minutes for the Black History event. Um, and what else? What did I forget? I 
think you covered it. I would just encourage all of you, if you're not already, um, join our connect our network online. Um, follow us on social media, um, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Um, we look forward to connecting with you. And if you're not already an ASPA member, um, we encourage you to join. Um, the membership fees are not expensive compared to some other organizations that I belong to. And the student rates are absolutely very well. And um, the South Florida um, chapter partners with most of our universities locally, so that if you have students, if for those that are in universities and, and the students can take the initiative, um, if you have a group of students, the, the chapter will pay half the fees if the university will pay the other half of the fees for the students for the first year. So we're willing to do that for the first year to get you on board. So, um, you know, there are different programs out there that we're, will, that we're willing to, um, to partner with you guys. So, um, and also don't forget the, the Aspen National Conference, that's April. Um, that's gonna be virtual for the first time. So fingers crossed. And, um, and I think we're gonna be sending you guys a survey. Uh, we need your feedback so that we can build upon this. This is our first, this is our 15th annual conference, but this is our first time having a virtual event, having a virtual conference. So um, we would really like your feedback. And so when you get those surveys, please return them. Um, and again, thank you all for, for coming. We really appreciate you spending the day with us today. Thank you again very much, everyone. And we'll see you in a few minutes. See you soon.